But it's really important to understand that your relationship and your relationship can be very really different from your relationship with your peers. It's not always the way you're trusted. Um, we really need to focus on uh, that's kind of a new sort of thing we need to help people grow and uh, we need to understand what motivated them to come to the show in the first place. Maybe what, what are some of the challenges that we're actually having with that? Um, what are the true aspirations? Uh, these aren't always things that you, you know, until they're just sitting side by side with anybody else. And now it's going to be your responsibility as a manager to really understand these things at a deeper level so you can make sure that they have the right set of challenges and that's the right kind of thing that can help you grow as a person. I think that's really important. Um, I think Michael said this perfectly, but like one-on-one is your number one tool for that. Make sure you have one-on-one seven consistent and most interactive. And if there's one thing I would like to consider and find a way to learn about, it's like on the previous one, because it's the one that has a lot of stuff that you want. Luckily, there's lots of good resources out there. Okay, so month two. So month one, you've got into the habit of learning. Uh, you set up the money one, so you don't have to have a money one. The challenge is starting to get a little bit full. So you've got meetings with customers, you've got meetings with the boss, you've got meetings with the staff of work. Uh, and pretty soon, it looks like this. So why do I seem to waste this slide? Probably what most of our clients look like. Um, and this uh, is sort of the first of several times that I've seen this kind of response to the start of this. You know, you need to have your meetings all day long. When you're not in meetings, you keep checking out the answers and you're just tired. So you can stay away from that. And you just make sure you have to put this all day long. And you never have time to do this because it's so active and it's all day long. The second time track that I've seen is the second one. And Michael alluded to this. It's that science that you know how to do so well. And it's so tempting to go back to something that you can Probably a fairly senior technical person on the team before you become a manager. Uh, I'm used to getting building design docs and making stuff go wrong and passing out my technical issues. And, and by, not, uh, by not delegating those to your team, and then like the team leaders are going on, to not only give you more of these things, time away from management, but also maybe not give instructions to fail them because you need to get to get these things done. And you're going to focus on those things. So, what do we do about this? Uh, I have managers that work for me at uh, Twitter and see this uh, about three months into the job. Uh, came in one day and she you know, she was clearly in the email of reading Dutch by us. And she said, you know, I'm not going to call it free. I just I don't know what to do with that. Uh, and my, when I was an engineer a few months ago, I had this really nice type of interview that I could write some code. I could write some stuff that could stand up and debug and things like that. And I always knew that I was going to manage. And I don't have that type of interview. Something about that phrase is that we really click the first step. And so, what we, we put together is something we call the EM of the page. Um, it's really just a set of structured checklists that correspond to different time intervals. So, if you have a daily checklist, a weekly checklist, and a monthly checklist, uh, these are customized to suit the needs of the particular team and the particular manager. So, the things that that manager tends to procrastinate on, there are things that that team really needs to focus on, that really want to help with. Um, and then again, kind of a broken record about this for the last few months, too, that I in your time with um, So that you have that time with you. Uh, even if you happen to be too busy that day, you don't get to break up stuff and just come back the next day and just say, I'm fine, I'll give you some time. Um, so what does this look like? Um, I know this is really hard to read. I'm going to get a uh, template of this posted on the public camera that it's this way. Um, here's an example. So we've got the daily tasks, the weekly tasks, and the monthly tasks, and I'm broken down by different categories. We've got procedures, people, projects, um, and this is, you know, this is again, it's pretty kind of pretty customized to everybody's situation. But just to run through an example, so on the people category, and something that when you're growing a team that you need to be thinking about daily is your recruiting pipeline. Like you can't afford to let great candidates look through the cracks because it's got to be on like every single day. You can't get distracted by whatever the cracks are going on around you. On a weekly basis, you might need to be thinking about feedback, especially if that's not enough for something that comes naturally to you. You need to have that time to reflect on. And what happened last week, and who do I need 
need to get some things to it, and I need to get some, some perspective feedback to it. Uh, on a month, monthly basis, these are the hardest ones for that because they just take much, much longer to turn into a kind of even a flavor of a nebulous one. But maybe on, on a monthly basis, I need to think about it. Does everyone understand what I expect to get here? How does it change over the last month? How people move in a different way than I think they would be expected to um, And so, having that time um, blocked off. We do it for you. Let me know what else you can tell us. That's the first thing to do. Hopefully, we can get you to the next step. Okay. So now we're in month three. We spent the first month learning about learning, second month learning about time management, taking control of our calendar. Month three is the last year to spend time in the next year. And I think back to my first year as a manager. This is the feeling I'm having. I'm not, I'm not sure if I was driving straight, much less even on the road, and even if I'm about to go into a hit. I had no idea. And there's, you know, there's a couple reasons why I didn't manage to have a field of play. Um, as an engineer, I think the work that we all built up in our different fields, the other systems, the other ones that we want. And you've got a pretty clear idea of whether that's a topic. It's the new system that you've created that you can get on the site, how many budgets do you have in your library, and it's a pretty clear message there. Um, and as a manager, I you know the work product that you have, uh, when you're looking to to get rewarded by the price of your And that's a hard shift price and the price of 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 the price I'm kicking by it. Um, it's been helpful. And so, um, what do you do to get that? So, I think the first step is to really sketch out what's the state of the something that we've done before. Um, and this is something that I think is good to do to make sure we're helping to manage it. Um, this team really needs to make a different institution. We need to improve the law. We have questions that I'm happy to answer. I'm happy to something that your manager had in mind for you to help fix one of the other issues. First step is to figure out what the are. And then try to take the morning for that. Try to figure out how do I get better treatment for the summer and how to get the best of the system. Try to get, maybe to get a survey that's a great book for the first time, but then the survey can give you a more professional and more professional. So it really highlights uh, how the team, how the team members get out of the camera comes together. Um, maybe you need to see yourself in the room as much as the work that the system starts tracking how they feel about it. Um, so it's just building up a sense of cognitivity, I think it's really important in this in this framework. Um, and this is more of sort of a looking forward view. Um, I just want to get a sense of like how I've been doing these last two months, how am I feeling about the job? So I have side projects and calling functional tests for managers. Uh, this is one of them. This is a top tip I like to give new managers at the top time. Uh, which is to sit down and in one minute for first time to the meeting where you're listening to that that person. Um, what are you going to do with that person? I think uh, Michael mentioned just about how you to get an assessment of the person. And so during this third month, you should start to get a sense of like, what makes these people tick, what makes them different from each other. And so that's why it's not so hard to get that person out of the way. You want to build a whole team. Um, and the next thing I think to look for in this third month is you should be starting to see the changes you want to make to the team. Um, you've been in probably two months if you're new here, you're not making a lot of radical changes. Um, because things are probably still going the same way they were going before. Um, but I think you may need to start to get a sense of like, hey, here's something I'm going to see, here's something I'm going to change. Um, and before, before they become blind to a sense of like, hey, that's not even sure that it's not going to happen. Um, and Jeff Aldis was the manager that I had to handle on the February team. Um, and after a couple of months, he realized that uh, things were really getting blocked in certain states. Things were just not being managed just the way they should. And it was his first understanding of it. He couldn't figure out why. Uh, what he realized was that there's tremendous inconsistency in how people are supposed to be behaving. Some people were just trivially checking off whatever they can about their desk. Um, other people were really leaving on a standard of speech level. Uh, and those people were trying to the other folks who weren't working as well. Uh, so what he did um, was work on the key phase of the case, which is clearly enumerated. Here's what I expect to third of you. Here's what I expect to the bed. Here's what I expect to the field. And really streamlined the process and got everyone together and got everyone on the same page. So that's the kind of thing you want to see when you're going to make a decision on the first, the scaling of the first, how they're going to improve the efficiency of the first process. Um, 
And then the last thing is to get a sense of, you know, what's your happiness for? Like, you've done this job for three months, and it's first time, and it's first confusing, but it's just confusing in an exciting way. You're actually, like, excited to go to work and, and motivated to pack up a new thing, or you're really dreading it. Um, and so this all kind of builds up to something that I think is really important at the end of the first time. Which is a workout to go and go to the It's something that's not a lot of energy. Yeah. Um, because you, you know, you really should have this moment where you decide between the red pill and the blue pill. And too often, you may just get like, again get swept up with the momentum. Um, and, you know, as, as engineering organizations, we should expect that not every successful engineer is going to be a successful engineer. And so if you don't have a moment in time to fall in the steps and say, hey, we can take them out. Then the only way you can have unsuccessful answers is when things really go off the rails and the potential might be worse. And I also think this is a, um, uh, I think it's something that uh, people in this room who maybe run larger organizations, they need to make this a safe place. Uh, too often we describe transition to the next promotion. And when you've been promoted, they talk about you know to go down, you weren't so excited, and then after two months, if you decide, you know, you know, I really want to go back to my old job. That's a real ego for us. You have to sort of be demoted at that point. And so I think it's probably going to disrupt this process to push away further this uh, as a transition. And I encourage you all to think about it the same way. You know, tied back to the deal of tech ladder um, that we discussed in CMA before. And having ways for engineers to get fit and to stay dance independently of living with the management, I think it's an important part of the engineering culture for these So, for those that do decide, I think it's the right thing, of course, the main thing is this. Um, for those that do decide to take the right thing, I just want to end with a few thoughts about how it will affect the surviving best of succeeding members. The one thing you'll definitely encounter after going from the kind of three month time period to the three quarter to the three year time period is you're going to need to be growing your resume. You're going to need to be growing your resume. I'm hoping I'm growing your resume. Um, and so, a mindset I like to instill in your managers is to really focus on people's strengths and how do you enhance that. Um, I think the gains to be had from taking something someone is good at and being exceptional at it can be far greater than gains to be had from taking something that someone's marginal at and making them okay and be so bad at it. Um, and typically, um, engineers are much more motivated to focus on the areas where they're great. Uh, typically, the areas where they're weak, they've heard about it over and over again throughout their career. They try to fix it and just try to hear about it. Um, and so, I think that's an important mindset to have. It's a point to be that. Um, also, communication is something that's really typically challenging for software engineers. Um, it's complicated. Um, and I think it's something that takes a long time to be able to get at. Uh, but I also think it's a force multiplier and an impact multiplier for teams. So if you can articulate the ideas that your team has in a way that your executives are excited about, it's going to get you more resources and higher execution so you still have less experience. If you're able to have really effective, fruitful conversations with your team and give them feedback in a way that's successful and not scary, that can say that it makes sense. And so, figure out how to get better at communication, whether that's across, so that's practicing one to one with your manager, uh, but figure out how to get that, get that going. Um, and then the last thing is really to figure out how to have fun. Now, uh, crowd makes really easy to play, especially if you're somebody who can play just popping in every room, walking down the hallway, the person who's on their phone, walking really fast. You can kind of stretch out. Um, and I think, you know, for those of us who are in this room, um, we're probably here because we've actually just enjoyed this job. We're just trying to, 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 to enjoy from it. Um, whether that's um, you know, helping someone get to a new level in their career, helping work through an you know, interpersonal conflict, you know, tipping point where you think you're successful and are really comfortable learning. Whatever it is that brings you joy about this job, you know, really identify that, focus on it, make sure that it's pleasant. 